So this video is going to be slightly longer only because I ran into a problem along the way and I'm going to show you the problem so that you guys can see that I am also confused and I try to get help from more experienced people and they are also confused. But um, I have done this exact method with um, some other stuff and it worked out fine. So I'm going to continue to show the whole process. So in this step, we actually need to hold this flavor folder and or not folder but file and we'll go up to the flavor exe and it will automatically open it up for us and then we will see um, some information and then the rendered model um, now this program is not the best i would assume that's because uh from software just hasn't opened up the ability to um, let us access the files directly and so we have to come up with all these fancy programs just to enter into this world um, but i also wanted to point out that the fbx file cannot be dropped onto the flavor exe it will do absolutely nothing and you'll just be left scratching your head so just drop the flavor file on top of the exe and it will open up this render um, we can go ahead and click the mesh button and see how many rows we got for the base file and it appears there's two meshes um, so you can use this information to remember what you will be adding on to it when you import the new model the fbx model if you do not feel the need to use Blender, you are able to just select the scale button or whatever uh, other transformation that you want, and you could just adjust it from right there. It's super picky, like the numbers, like they'll alter it quite a bit. Um, and you see the area where it says delete, and you're gonna see two boxes below it. If you click one of those boxes, it will delete when you modify um, and the only way to save the file each time you do something is by clicking modify but I didn't like this I don't I don't want it flipped upside down so I'm going to show you how to fix that so if you want to fix a file you messed up and it saved it go ahead and delete the file that you made and flavor made a backup for you so delete the dot back accept it and then bam you have the original file again um, flavor and yabber both do this and it's really extremely helpful because i cannot tell you how many times i've messed up a file i can guarantee you're going to come into a situation where you mess it up too anyway so i'm going to click import model and i'm going to find the fbx file so desktop mods, um, not mod engine, it is in the penetrator file. Go, 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 all the way up to the FBX. And then when I click it, it will just import over the model, the base model. And you'll watch the image get bigger. Bam. So I click no to everything. Um, actually, I click yes to the texture thing, but it didn't really make a difference as you can see the texture is not over it in fact this is an issue that I ran into um, you can see the base textures are still on the base uh, I have checked everything I don't know why there's all this emptiness in the mesh it just it, it confuses me quite a bit but I'm gonna go and continue with with this uh this guide <laughs> so we're going to click the material button which will give us our textures as you can see there's now three lines and um, we know that the third line is the the uh, imported line because it wasn't there before so the path we can talk about that in a second is where the texture is located as you see and um, two and three they are identical our row two is identical to the row three. That means the pathing is exactly the same. So theoretically, that all that purple should have gotten overlapped onto the 
FBX mesh. But it did not, and that's that's where this problem is. And no matter what I do, I cannot get the textures to sit on the Blender file. Did not have this issue before. You most likely won't run into this issue. Um, the theory is that the uh, file itself is messed up. And I don't know. I really don't know how to fix this, but... If I do find a fix, I will make a separate video over it. Anyway, let's go ahead and import the edited file into the game so I can show you that for some reason the Blender file didn't take. So we're going to go back all the way up to the DCX file. Okay, go back forward again. So the penetrator, and then remember how we opened up um, the DCX file and it became this folder? Well, we're going to go ahead and repack it to make it that file that we see right below it. So grab it and drop it into Yabber. And then that file we saw earlier becomes a dot .back file, just to make sure we don't fuck anything up. We're going to take it, the new .dcx file, and drop it into parts, just like you would any other mod. And we're going to go ahead and launch the game and see if any changes occurred. So I have Steam open. And then I launch the mod engine to um, Elden Ring Launcher. Unfortunately, nothing changed. Um, and it's because there is no texture located all around the FBX file, the Blender file. We just, I'm running into an issue where I cannot get the textures to wrap itself, even with the correct pathing around the Blender file. And if you want some visual proof, we will click the base file, which we already know is number two. And then we click modify, which as I told you earlier, if you click one of the boxes under delete and click modify, it will in fact delete the file. So now we have this naked ass thing. And if I bring it into the game, it will not exist at all. And if you did not plan on deleting anything, I'm sorry, I don't think there's a back button, but you know what you can do is, uh, as you see, I tried to unclick it and modify, but it didn't work. But what you can do is use that dot .back file and just start back from the beginning. Here is the visual example of if the texture is not sitting on the mesh, the texture will not render. And since we deleted the base file, which seemed to be the only thing holding on to the texture, it deleted the entire weapon. Very unfortunate. It's just very confusing. Hopefully you don't have this issue. I wanted to take a look at the um, texture files. And if you want to also take a look at the texture files, you're going to take the .tpf file and you're going to drop it into Yabber because it also needs to be unpacked. Do not try to directly unpack it with paint.net. There's a very high chance that you will make all your exe files um, just not work. They will all open with paint.net and we don't want that. If you accidentally make all your exe files open with paint.net, even though I told you not to, I do have a video that will save your fucking life. <laughs> Trust me, it, it was a fucking nightmare. I was really scared, but it is definitely the best video out there and the newest, most relative video. Once you unpack the file, it will look something like this. Um, I don't know what all this means, but I know that this is the path that we actually clicked in material. Um, if I open up with paint, it will come up correctly. Um, I decided to try to increase the size of this to see if it would do anything. And it did change um, some stuff. Uh, it made the mesh file just like solid black, which is really weird. I, I don't see how this how this played a part at all on it. Like, it was really confusing. <laughs> Actually, it's kind of like it took um, the wrong part of this file and applied it around the model. I don't know. It's super weird. I don't understand. Like I said, if I, if I figure it out, I will make a separate video on it. So anyway, I skipped it, but I just, all I did was increase the size of all the files from 1024 to 1080, just to see if it would do anything. Um, and then I'm going to take the TPF folder 
that we had unpacked, and I'm going to drop it into Yabber. And it's literally going to do the same thing. It's going to make a backup file of the original and then give me a new TPF texture file. And then I'm going to, uh, we're just going to restart the whole thing. So open up flavor. Wow, that is, yep, just like I said, it made all the textures pitch black. I have no idea what this is for. It did not change anything in the game. In fact, if I open up the game right now, it will have the base item in the game and not the mesh that we're looking at right now because there is still technically no texture located over it. Needless to say, I said, fuck it. I don't know what's wrong with this file. I'm going to just alter it in flavor, which is a real pain in the ass, but you know, it is what it is. So. We only have the two rows now because I decided not to import the Blender version. Um, right clicking is a pain in the ass. Like just this whole program just kind of sucks. But I had the scale thing checked, and I have 1.2 because I I wanted <laughs> the numbers to alter as little as possible. And it's X Y Z, so X is going to be um, in this case it's going to be girth. Uh, y is going to be length, and then. Uh, Z is going to be like, I guess, a different form of thickness. You, you'll just have to uh, play around with it, I guess. I don't, I don't know. And when I messed up and I went too big, um, do not do a negative number. It will just completely flip it entirely. And that is not what we're here for. <laughs> But I clicked modify to save the changes. Now let's go ahead and import it into the game. So we go all the way back to the .dcx file, and then I'm going to go back to Yabber. Why did I? Why did I do that? Okay, there's Yabber. Click, hold, drop it onto Yabber. Yabber automatically does all the work for me. I take this file and I find the parts file in my mod folder and drop it in because. It is technically a mod now. Replace the old one and let's check it out. Well, it definitely changed it. It's 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 pretty big now, not gonna lie. <laughs> um uh, that's how you do it. This was a real pain in the ass.